Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So now we're going to continue with the AC voltage controllers. Um, the uh, session outcome will be the after completing this session, the student should be able to, uh, the first one will be to describe the operation of AC voltage controllers. Number two, derive the quantities related to the performance of AC voltage controllers. Number three, solve problems related to AC voltage controllers. Number four, simulate AC voltage controllers using circuit, uh, circ uh, circuit using PC. Okay, so let's look at the note. All right, so AC voltage controllers. Uh, as an introduction, the main purpose of AC voltage controller or AC regulator is to regulate the AC output voltage applied to the load. So this is um the where we have a system where the, the supply is in the form of AC voltage and the load also requires an AC different level of AC voltage. So we then we need to use this AC voltage controllers. Okay, so if you look at it, some of the applications of such AC voltage control are as follows. Number one would be the control of heating in industrial heating load. Number B, control of illumination in lighting control system. When you have a lighting system, you want to uh, dim, dim, which is uh, you want to make it uh, the color, tone down the color, so you can control the illumination of lighting control system. And then control of the RMS magnitude of voltage in uh, in a transformer tap changing system. So, uh, and finally, speed control of industrial AC drive, because we know that to control an uh, uh, there are a few parameters or a few control techniques to control the speed of the motor. For example, the induction motor, we can have these uh, probably controlling this uh, voltage, input voltage. We can control the uh, frequency. Uh, we can vary the uh, phase. I can't remember. So one of it will be the control of the input supply to the motor. Right, so by varying this uh, AC voltage, uh, voltage, then you can be able to control the speed of the industrial AC drive. All right, so actually there are many types of circuit topology for AC AC voltage controllers. Uh, we can have this uh, simple as an inverse parallel connection, and then uh, we have a uh, in for the inverse parallel connection. We're going to use two thyristors. And there is a new uh, single device which is known as a triac. So this triac actually consists of two thyristors. So instead of you use two single uh, individual thyristors, but now you can use only triac, but it will act as the inverse parallel connection, whereby you have a thyristor 1, thyristor 2 connected in parallel, uh, inverse parallel connection. And then uh, finally, the more complicated uh, circuit, which is known as IGBT-based circuit with PWM control, right? So, and uh, 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 as I mentioned, this is only a basic circuit that we're going to discuss in EPO 510. Outside there, there are many uh, circuit that can do the AC-AC voltage, con uh, voltage conversion. For example, you can have a metric conversion, uh, metric circuit, right? So, matrix converter that can do this uh, ACC voltage control as well. Alright, so EPO, we're going to discuss only the inverse parallel connection circuit, right? But there are two techniques to control the, uh, the thyristor 1 and thyristor 2. Okay, so we're going to discuss one circuit, but Two control techniques to control thyristor one and thyristor two, and therefore you can have a different output voltage, right? The waveform of the output voltage will be different with two separate two uh, control techniques. Okay, so let's look at the two types of control are normally used as uh, is known as the first one will be the phase control. And number two will be the integral cycle control or the uh, also known as an on-off control. Okay, so these two control techniques will determine the output voltage, the wave shape, the waveform of the output voltage. Okay, 
Right, so we're going to focus on the first one, which is the phase control. And we're going to analyze with the resistive loads. And then the second one, we're going to continue with the uh, inductive load, which is R plus L. All right, so for the resistive loads, what we're going to have is, we're going to have a, uh, the supply, okay, and connected to two thyristors. Which is which are connected in inverse parallel connection, whereby if you look at the thyristor one, the anode of the thyristor one will be connected to anode uh, cathode of thyristor two. Is it? This is anode for well, thyristor one, and it is connected to cathode of thyristor two. Is it? So it is common here, and on the output side, you are going to have cathode of thyristor 1 will be connected to the anode of thyristor 2, and then the output will be connected to the load. Right? So, in this uh, connection with a, uh, with a special uh, control of the thyristors, we're going to see that the thyristor 1 will control the power flow during positive cycle right during positive cycle so thyristor 1 will control on the positive cycle and thyristor 2 will control the power flow for the negative cycle okay so um therefore you're going to have the output voltage which is also an AC voltage control. So let's look at in, in detail what it's all about. Okay, so we have thyristor 1, thyristor 2. So let's look at, this is actually similar to, uh, if you look at further back to the rectifier, you can have a single phase, half wave control rectifier. Yeah? If I remove this, if I remove the thyristor 2 here, this is basically, the single phase half wave control rectifier isn't it right so in this case you're going to have two thyristors so thyristor one will control so thyristor one will control the positive cycle okay and thyristor two will control the negative cycle oh, sorry from here to there. Okay, so how to do that? We're going to supply, provide a pulse to thyristor 1 with 45 degrees. So this will be the thyristor 1, pulse for thyristor 1. And for the thyristor 2, you're going to have a, a pulse which is alpha plus pi. Okay, so this is your alpha, and here you're going to have alpha plus pi for thyristor 2. For thyristor 1, you're going to have alpha. Okay, so therefore, in if you look at this example, the thyristor 1 will going to have a 45, 46. Why 45, 46? Because it is a short pulse, all right? 45, 46 degree. And for thyristor 2, it will be going to have 180 degree plus 45. So it becomes 225, 226. This is for thyristor 2, which is going to be 225, and this will be 226. Right? So, <coughs> therefore, during positive 5 cycle, the current will flow into this connection until you trigger thyristor 1 at 45, 46. So this will appear as a short circuit and then the current will flow through the load. Uh, thyristor 2 will be off and it will follow in that direction. So this is the, uh, the current flow for positive half cycle. Right? And for the negative half cycles, the current will flow through the uh, resistor here. And then it will trigger at 235, so it will appear as a short circuit. 
So this is open circuit and then come back to the uh, supply again. Yeah? So this is for negative half cycle. Right? So therefore your output voltage, if you look at this uh, waveform, so the output voltage actually repeating. Yeah? It is a periodical waveform, a repetitious waveform. Hence, of course, uh, for a repeating uh, waveform, there will be um, uh, harmonics, right? If you look, it's not sinusoidal. So, therefore, it contains, it consists of fundamental and the harmonics. We don't know where is it, is it? We don't know the harmonics for the uh, output voltage waveform pair there, but we pretty sure because of that harmony will contribute to that. Uh, there is a other harmonics uh, components at different level of uh, frequency okay so therefore again we are interested in looking at the rms voltage mm. so that is a derivation so we're going to look at the derivation of the waveform again okay? so the input voltage is again is a vpx sine omega t and the angles of tester 1 is alpha and tester 2 is alpha plus pi okay so for the output voltage we interested in looking at the rms of the output voltage so again rms root always memorize that is a root mean and square okay so therefore in this equation we're going to have root first and then the mean which is 1 over 2 pi all the uh, equation I think I'm going to start with the general equation so general equation will be V out equals to root mean 1 over 2 pi 0 to 2 pi okay general equation will be V out D d t squared is it right so this is general equation and then you proceed with that uh, integral okay? so you have 1 over 2 pi if you look at the first uh, integral this is actually for that one is it from alpha to pi okay so this is the first integral And the second integral will be from pi plus alpha to 2 pi. So this is second integral. Right? So therefore, if you look at the equation again, so you have the RMS output voltage equals to V out, 1 over 2 pi, alpha to pi, pi, uh, uh, alpha to pi, V as squared d theta, plus uh, pi plus alpha to 2 pi v and squared d theta and therefore you have this um, actually it's a similar integral then you can combine so now it become 2 okay so this is after you combine both integral here there are the same integration same integral so now it become 2 okay of uh, alpha plus uh, 2 pi v, uh, v as squared d theta then you replace this with the function v pick sine theta and then you have this and finally if you solve for integration of squared sine squared then you'll be able to get this equation which is v out equals to v pick over square root 2 uh, integration of 1 over pi pi minus alpha plus sine 2 alpha divided by 2 okay so again treat all of this in radian okay everything should be in radian this also in radian everything should be in radian do not mix do not mix between degree and radian some of you may use 180 degree here and then you have uh, alpha 45 degree for example is it so this is wrong yeah it should be in radian okay everything should be in radian okay
So, by varying the delay angle, alpha from 0 to pi, it can also vary the RMS output voltage from Vs to 0, 0. So, if you look further, if you vary the value of alpha, okay, so if you move now alpha to there, so it will follow the same waveform. It go further. Three. So in different wave shape now. So you're going to have different level of RMS. Okay. Right? So now you can control alpha from zero to pi. And finally, if you have alpha equals to pi, your output is is zero. Okay. When you have alpha equals to zero, that becomes a bit big. Uh, Vs, RMS, if you have pi, then you have a zero output. Okay, right. Next is that. Okay, so again, I did mention to you just now because it is a periodical but non sinusoidal, therefore, it consists of fundamental as well as the higher harmonics component. So, uh, the output voltage uh, there can also be. Are represented in the form of Fourier harmonics. Okay, Fourier harmonics or in the harmonic spectrum, you're going to see a component of fundamental as well as all these harmonics, is it? Yeah, fundamental and harmonics. Right? And it can be represented in this equation by this equation, harmonic equation, or you can have a CN sign. And omega t plus v n zero, and equals to one to infinity. They are the same equations here. Okay, so to get a one, so some of the problem you want to look into the only the harmonic of the fundamental component. So if you want to focus on fundamental component. Right, whereby n equals to one is it fundamental component n equals to one? So you have this is a general equation a n equals to one over pi, uh, or in in I think this uh, the general equation is better for you to remember in terms of t. So you have a n equals to two over t, zero to t. V S T cos N omega T D T zero. So that will be easier. Two over T zero to T. So if you replace that, then you have one over pi V P V S T cos N N omega T T omega T. And if you want to look into only N equals to one, what the fundamental? So this is where you have only fundamental that become a one. 2 over t, integration 0 to t, v peak, cos n omega t. And now this becomes n equals to 1, is it? Right, so n equals to 1, so there is no n there. So if you solve that, okay, you can solve this by using this equation. So um, try this. So you just simply uh, integrate the equation from alpha to pi first, okay, and then you proceed with pi plus alpha to 2 pi, so sine omega t, sine omega t, cos 1 omega t. So the integral is different, but then they are actually the same. Yeah? The integral, the, 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 uh, the integral is actually similar, then you can combine that first integral and second integral, now it becomes 2 twice, so it becomes 4 of v peak over 2 pi. And then solve for that, you're going to have your a1 equals to v peak over pi cos 2 alpha minus 1 divided by 2. And for b1, you can, so, uh, you can do, use the same uh, equation here, but uh, you replace with a sine n omega t. This is a sine omega t. And if you solve that, then finally you have this equation whereby b1 equals to v peak over pi pi minus alpha 
plus sine 2 alpha so again radian everything should be in radian and therefore now you can have c1 equals to a1 squared plus b1 squared that's it All right so in this notes again now you have v load 1 and the output the load voltage uh, the fundamental of the output voltage can now be written as uh, this is the equation is it the harmonic equation you can combine that into Fourier uh, equation again v load so this actually represent c1 is it so this is your c1 sine omega t plus v1 uh, v load 1 so this is how you're going to find what is a v load 1 the angle as well as c1 v1 squared plus v1 squared Okay, straightforward, and then you can find the power factor as well by knowing the uh, equation. Then the power factor, assuming input power equals to output power, we know that the power factor, the real power actually, the power factor multiplied by apparent input power. So we have what actually becomes uh, equation start with S. Uh, P equals to S V I. Sorry. Sorry. S equals to power factor. Is it? What's power by power factor? Or normally you you use S cos theta. Is it? Okay. P equals cos theta. Or oh, this is also s equals to power factor multiplied by power factor. So you have power factor equals to real power divided by s. And real power, if you look at the output voltage, real power can be calculated by using this equation. And therefore, apparent input power equals to v peak over square root 2 and multiplied by the v load rms divided by r. Is it? Okay, so you have V RMS and so I S RMS. Right? And therefore power factor become load RMS divided by peak. And if you cancel everything, then finally you find out that the power factor can be found by only looking at the load RMS as well as the input RMS. Uh, in this case, if you connect it to the TMB system, you're going to have 240 volt input RMS. Is it? Uh, only you need to find what is a V load, then that will give you power factor. Okay, so you can try, you can look into the Rashid page 508 for some equation, uh, some uh, calculation, some examples, then you can find the output, uh, the, the solution for that. Okay, so now we continue with the single phase bidirectional controllers with resistive and inductive load. So in the circuit here, we're going to have another R plus L, uh, the inductive load connected to your uh, uh, bidirectional controllers. Okay, so uh, before that, let's recall what we did in voltage um, single phase half wave control rectifier. So therefore, I'm going to remove this thruster 2. Uh, that looks familiar, isn't it? So you have supply voltage and then thruster 1, R plus L. So if you still remember, so we're going to trigger thruster 1 at certain value of alpha. So let's say that this is your alpha. And therefore, your output voltage will be going to start to trigger the thruster 1 at alpha then you're going to see the output voltage will be in the form of that is it you will follow the uh, supply voltage and after zero crossing to the negative half cycles the current still flowing in the uh, clockwise due to the inductor because of the inductor uh, uh, still in, uh, in the circuits then current still 
flow in this uh, clockwise uh, direction. Therefore, it will force tester one to stay on, isn't it? Until the current goes to zero. Until current goes to zero, then at B, the beta, which is known as the extension angle, um, then tester one start to uh, uh, will shut down, and therefore the output voltage will be in this form z rate so this is half wave control rectifier okay so uh, to be able for this circuit to produce the uh, ac output voltage waveform therefore we add another tester z rate so we add another tester tester 2 that will control the power flow in the negative half cycle so during negative half cycle if you look at this uh, waveform so during negative half cycle, you're going to trigger tester 2 again at alpha plus pi. Okay, so therefore, uh, tester 2 will still off until you trigger tester 2 at alpha plus pi. Then your output voltage will follow this waveform until beta for tester 2 is it okay until beta for tester 2 so if you combine tester 1 and tester 2 finally your output voltage now will be in this form okay so this will be your output voltage so again this is periodical okay so that will be your output voltage, is it? Alright. So, if you look at this uh, waveform, it is periodical, but again, it is not sinusoidal, therefore, it contains our harmonics. There are some harmonics there, so this is fundamental, and you can see the uh, harmonics for this waveform. So, again, you can find the RMS, and you can also find the fundamental component of the output voltage is it right for this waveform okay so let's look at the waveform okay so this is a current huh? so the, this is a current of the circuit so if you want to find the beta you can you need to set i beta is equals to zero in the zero so we did this before in the half wave control rectifier to find i beta so therefore, this is equation. I hope you can derive. Uh, you also refer to the previous uh, uh, notes on half wave rectifier, and finally you find out that the output voltage, uh, the uh, the current, okay, can be defined by this equation. Right, current can be described by this equation. I one equals to V peak over Z sine omega t minus p minus sine alpha minus p e to the power of r over omega l alpha minus omega t and if you let the current force to zero at angle omega t equals to b and then you can see that i1 equals to b equals to this you can find the beta by solving this equation is it okay so if you solve this equation then you can find uh, the beta eh? the extension angle and uh okay so you can use a zero finding function in scientific calculator we have tried this before to find a beta using the calculator okay so you follow the same step then you can find beta or you can also have beta simply as can be estimated from the load angle such as beta equals to phi plus pi Okay, beta equals to phi plus pi. Okay, so um, however, if load angle is larger, then this equation is not applicable. But this is actually limited to the uh, the load angle. If the load angle is very large, then you cannot use this equation anymore.
okay you have to find you have to use this equation to get beta okay so this estimation uh, this estimation of beta equals to pi plus phi, uh, load angle phi is the load angle eh? how what is the load angle you can find this from this equation load angle is equals to omega uh, inverse tangent omega l over r it depends on the uh, load right then it can give you the load angle this is known as the load angle okay however if load angle is larger than this equation it's not applicable so again take note of this okay so you have to calculate uh, uh, load angle first if you uh, if you find that alpha, uh, load angle is very large for example you find out that uh, load angle is for example uh, 100 degree for example okay so this is actually the uh, considered as a large load angle therefore you cannot use this estimation you have to use this uh, current equation to find beta all right okay and then next we're going to have a conduction angle conduction angle is how long uh, the tysters each tyster will conduct so if you refer to the waveform again so this is your waveform so let's say this is tyster one is it so tyster one conduct from beta uh, from sorry from alpha until beta is it so this is your is known as a conduction angle gamma okay eh? so this is conduction angle and if you look uh, on the again on the extinction angle we say that this is your beta is it eh? and this is actually your load angle hmm? because <clears throat> Beta equals to pi plus phi. Eh? For the case of small load angle, beta equals to this load angle plus pi. So this from there to there is pi. Is it? Eh? So this is load angle and this is beta. Okay, so you can control if you look further on the equation, uh, we know that this is load angle, this is beta, okay, and this is your alpha. So you can vary the output voltage by varying alpha, okay, if you let it be in that realm, so you're going to have a so this is your output. Okay, that is it. So this is alpha plus pi. Right? So you can vary the wave shape, waveform of the output voltage by varying the alpha. But there is also a um, case. We're going to look at the case if alpha below than the load angle. Okay? So what happens to the circuit if you have this case? Okay, alpha below then the load angle, which means you want to trigger uh, or you, if you focus on the thyristor, uh, the negative phase cycle, you want to trigger thyristor 2. Yeah, so you want to trigger thyristor 2, but thyristor 1 is still continue to function. Is it? In this case, is it really uh, uh, T2 uh, can be uh, triggered? Can we trigger Tyser 2 in this case? Let's have a look. Okay, so that will be under, I think, on the next slide. Okay, sorry, before that, uh, so before that, we're going to look at the RMS output voltage. So uh, refer to the uh, waveform again. I'm going to draw here the out supply voltage and then 
two cycle that will be two cycles then i'm going to go the output voltage Case is ready. All right. Okay, so what you need to do is this is a root mean square, root mean, so 1 over 2 pi. Now you're going to integrate alpha to beta, which is this from that point to this point alpha to beta. Oh, sorry. Okay. Next, the second integral actually from uh, pi plus alpha, pi plus alpha until pi plus beta. Okay, so you're going to integrate. The first integral covers this area, and then the other integral will cover into that area. So this is your period. So this is one period. Like that. Huh? Now you can put this 2 pi. So this is the first integration, and then you have this second integration. Squared, V peak sign, squared theta, squared theta. And then you can also again, this similar integral then you can combine is it so you can combine it become two all right so it's a sufficient for you to only evaluate one integral but then you have twice of that integrate in integration all right so that gives you that and finally you find out that the output voltage the rms of the output voltage equals to v peak over two square root two then you have 1 over pi b beta minus alpha plus sine 2 alpha over 2 minus sine 2 beta divided by 2. So again, everything should be in, in radian. Okay, everything should be in radian. Remember that. I always have a, a, a student uh, confused, uh, get confused, and then they start to mix between degree and radian okay so make sure that everything should be in radian and then okay now comes to controllable range of the output voltage so i just uh mentioned to you that depending the size of inductive load load angle the output voltage is only controllable if it is only controllable if your alpha is in between phi the load angle and pi okay load angle equals to inverse tangent omega l over r so that define your uh, phi so the output voltage is only controllable in these two range eh, between these two uh, load angle and phi so let's look at the waveform again okay so this is fixed right of, uh, this is actually load angle and this is your beta is it this is your beta okay and that is your alpha so you can trigger alpha to pi is it so this is the maximum alpha so Therefore, you can control the output voltage, the wave shape of the output voltage, only in between load angle and phi. Is it? Because uh, with that uh, range, then you can modify the load, uh, the waveform of the output voltage. But if your alpha falls below that load angle so this is your load angle so if your alpha falls below the load angle you cannot control the output voltage why okay let's have a look 
let's say that we want to uh, the load angle is 30 degree okay let's say the load angle is 30 degree because of r and l right uh, sorry because r and l size you get the load angle equals to 30 degree is that it and therefore beta become uh, 180 degree plus 30 degree so now it become 210 is it? Okay, 210 so now let's focus on uh, test the one okay let's focus on the operation of test the one okay let's say at the beginning of the simulation okay at the beginning of the simulation no thrusters are on no current flow and you start to have the supply voltage of sinusoidal so this is your supply voltage okay so so you start with zero eh? uh, you start at zero voltage okay so there is no sorry okay so this is your positive uh, sorry load angle is 30 degree so now so let's start with uh thyristor one okay so in the beginning thyristor one is off thyristor also thyristor two also off see so your output voltage is zero and then let's say you want to trigger thyristor one at 20 degree okay so after 20 degree of course it will start to trigger thyristor 1 so thyristor 1 will uh, successfully turn on and the output voltage will follow the shape of input voltage is it right input voltage and then you have until here the current is still flowing okay so current thyristor 1 is still flowing because the extension angle is at 210 for thyristor 1 is it right the extension angle for thyristor 1 is 210 and now you want to start to trigger thyristor 2 at of course 20 degree plus 180 degrees, right? Which is at 200 and uh, 200 degree. So you try to trigger thyristor two at this particular before the extension angle of thyristor one. So therefore, you won't be able to turn on thyristor two because thyristor one is still uh, on. And current still flowing in that direction, is it? Is it? Right? Yeah. Suddenly, you want to trigger thyristor two, is it? Right? Thyristor two during this point, you won't be able to do that. <coughs> so therefore, if you have a short pulse, then after it reach the uh, two hundred and ten, output voltage will goes to zero again. Okay. Yeah? So output voltage will goes to zero again, and there's no thyristor two uh, uh, operating, yeah, uh, on. So therefore, your output voltage will see this, and we repeat at the uh, similar happens at the next cycle. And then we follow that. Is it? Okay, so in this case, if your uh, alpha, the, uh, the firing angle, lower than the load angle, and if you provide the two thrusters with a short pulse, you won't be able to have the output voltage which is in the form of AC. Is it? Because now, if you look at this waveform, this is single phase half wave control rectifier this is rectifier is it eh? the output voltage is actually in dc form 
Okay, so to avoid that, you must provide a continuous output, a uh, continuous gate pulse. Okay, you're going to provide a continuous gate pulse. For example, in this case, you thyristor two, instead of you have thyristor two. Okay, so thyristor two again. This uh, we trigger thyristor one at twenty degree. 20 degree that's the one okay so you're going to have a long pulse this is pulse for that's the one 20 degree 250 degree if you like and then you also need to trigger that's the uh, two at 210 this is 210 until 180 degree if you like Okay, or you can trigger to 120 if you like. Okay, so in this case, you're going to have 210 degree. Okay? So in this case, when thyristor, uh, at first, you want to uh, trigger thyristor 2 at 210, is it? But unfortunately, because thyristor 1 is still flowing, you won't be able to trigger thyristor 2. So the output voltage will follow the uh, supply voltage again until the current is zero which is beta equals to uh, uh, you reach a, uh, the firing angle for thyristor 1 so after that it tries to go to zero now because of thyristor 2 still have the pulse now thyristor 2 will be successfully turned on okay? and output voltage will follow the supply voltage again and it will repeat in this case. So thyristor 1 will start to follow. So at the output also we follow the supply voltage. So in this case, if you provide that long pulse, your output voltage will actually sinusoidal voltage. It will actually follow the supply voltage if alpha below that the phi angle, eh? the load angle. So in this case, you need to provide a long duration, a wide pulse. Okay. So therefore, if you provide a wide pulse, and if in the case of alpha below than load angle, we still have an AC waveform, but you cannot control the output because it follow the supply voltage all the time. Okay. So that is the known as the controllable. Uh, can do it again. Controllable range of the output voltage. Okay, so depending the siphon active flow, the output voltage is only controllable if uh, alpha in between load angle and pi. And to avoid from the AC voltage to produce a rectifier type of waveform due to above case, the duration of the pulse should be wide. Avoid using the short pulse. So you need to avoid the short pulse. You have to provide a wide pulse such as duration of pulse 180 degree minus alpha or known as continuous gate pass. Eh, it's also known as a continuous gate pass. So if alpha below that, the load angle, and it is a continuous gate pass, the load current will not change with alpha. T1 turn on at load angle, load angle alpha, and turn T2 turn on at pi plus T. Hence, continuous sinus of the current will be obtained and not voltage will be put. Okay, so if you have this case of alpha below than phi angle, the output voltage is continuous. And if you look at the current, the current will be actually lagging. Okay, lagging the output voltage by load angle. Okay? So if you have a load angle, a certain value, so the current actually is sinusoidal and it will lag behind the, sub, uh, the supply voltage with the angle of load angle All right so take note this is for the uh supply uh, the case of control the range of the output voltage okay right uh so let's look at, have a look at the some of the pcm simulation i'm going to share with you the pcm i'm going to look at the r plus l open examples
take a drive, bubble turret, resume. Let's look at the no, sorry. AC AC R plus M. Okay, there you are. Okay, so uh, let's have a look. So in this case, we have a load angle equals to 32.14 degree. Okay, 32.14 degree. And we try to have a case of alpha below then. <coughs> uh, alpha below then. Um, we call it load angle, 20 degree. Now I'm going to adjust short at pulse. What happens if you have a short pulse there? Then this become 202. Okay, you provide a short pulse to your system. Transmission we supply reload. So let's have a tick of the voltage. Ah, there you are. Okay, try to understand this waveform. Okay, I'm going to also press the one and press the two. Okay, so this is the pulse to touch the one, and we know that the angle, the load angle is actually at 30 degree. Is it? So this is. Right? So this is 20 degree. And we know that the uh, the load angle is actually somewhere here, isn't it? Just 30 degree. So this is your load angle, which is alpha. And if you translate into the space, you have this is actually 210 degree, which is pi plus alpha. Okay, so this is beta. Okay, this is beta. So in this case, you trigger tester one. So the the red pulse here is actually to trigger tester one, and it is successfully turn on. So tester one turn on, and then during negative half cycle, you have current still flowing. So tester one still keep on flowing. However, when you try to trigger tester one. When you try to trigger tester one, uh, trigger to tester two at this two hundred, uh, sorry, two hundred degree, you won't be able to do that because current still flowing in that direction, isn't it? And you try to switch on tester two, it won't happen, isn't it? So, uh, voltage will follow, still follow the up voltage until beta, isn't it? Until the testers off and there is no pulse to continue to support tester 2 and therefore tester 2 will no will never turn on okay tester 2 will never turn on is it okay but if you provide a continuous output a uh, continuous gate pulse which is the angle equals to from 20 to 180 and yeah, the angle uh, the uh, duration of the pulse 20 to 180 and we are going to have this 200 to 360 around the circuit then look at this okay so I'm going to show you you trigger tester 1 At 20 degrees rate okay it's as if written on and then here you try to trigger the rest two is that it yeah. you try to trigger the rest two but actually you won't be happy uh, uh, you are not successfully turned on the two 
because your load angle uh because the firing angle is at uh, sorry the extinction angle is at 210 degree sorry but just after that because of we have a continuous get pulse therefore tester 2 will turn on after tester 1 is off at 210 degree <coughs> sorry for that after 210 degree so at this point there is still one will be off but there is still two now will be on because of this long pass uh, a wide pass duration so output voltage is actually sort of sort of waveform you cannot control if alpha below then the load angle you cannot control the output voltage the output voltage is always a sinusoidal supply voltage Okay, <coughs> and it is known as uncontrollable uh, range. Yeah, and this is, and we can all we can only control the output voltage between alpha and pi. Okay, so alpha has to be in between load angle and pi. Then you can control the output voltage. All right, I hope you very clear with that. Uh, next week we're going to look into the some of the uh sample uh, example okay for ac dc uh, for your test inshallah okay thank you